Hi guys, it's Bunny and welcome to another video and welcome to another WWE reaction. This video was recommended by Russell Festo and he said, please react to the worst heel turns. Congrats on being a mommy. Thank you. Oh my God, thank you so much. Okay, let's go and check out this video. Here's an example of a good heel turn. Oh my God! Definitely a good heel turn. And this is a bad heel turn. I got your little girlfriend's contract right here. We're gonna be talking about the ladder in what this video. What is the video. girlfriend I'm contract? To say, it only gets worse from here. Number ten, oh my God, Daniel Bryan. Me. Now so I'm not talking about when Daniel Bryan became the World Heavyweight Champion or when he turned heel in 2018 after becoming the WWE Champion. Okay. The heel turn I'm talking about happened in between those two. In the summer of 2013, Daniel Bryan organically rose to become WWE's hottest star. Bryan was pretty much the polar opposite of what WWE wanted its top stars to be like, so they tried to fight the fans and go but in a different direction. Why. In late 2013, Daniel Bryan became the target of the Wyatt family. This led to several matches between Brian the and the three Wyatts, but it all changed on the final the Raw of 2013. During the show, Daniel fought Luke Harper, Eric Rowan, and Bray Wyatt in a gauntlet match. This was Brian's breaky point, and after it was all done, the American Dragon gave in. The machine would never let me win, no matter how loud you people chanted. With that, Daniel Bryan turned heel and became part of the Wyatt family. Oh, I think no. WWE was hoping this would kill Bryan's momentum, but it didn't work. Two weeks after Daniel Bryan joined, he turned on the Wyatts and became a face, or good guy again. The biggest oh, problem with this heel bad. turn is that it happened at the absolute worst time. Daniel Bryan's popularity was on the rise, and rather than go along with it, WWE tried to fight it. Now, I do give WWE credit for course yep. correcting pretty quickly, and this heel turn didn't hurt Bryan's popularity or his eventual win at WrestleMania 30. However, things only get worse from here. Number nine, no. Los Matadores. Remember Los Matadores? No. They're no. one of the many incarnations of Primo and Epico. I won't say the tag team was phenomenal, Sorry, but it was memorable. Know. The gimmick of two masked Spanish bullfighters was colorful, and they even had a mascot, El Torito. In fact, had Los Matadores not been formed, we may have never gotten WLC. While fans remember all that, most this? don't remember that the group did turn heel. In September 2015, nice. Los Matadores lost a match to the Dudley Boys due to a miscommunication involving El Torito. After Word, Diego attacked the mascot and turned the group heel. Devon and Bubba then intervened and put the bullfighter through a table. Following the heel turn, Los Matadores only had one match as heels and it was nothing to write home about. After that match, Los Matadores disappeared and when they returned, they were under a completely new gimmick. If the Los Matadores stars. was going to retire less than a week after they turned heel, then why have them do it in the first place? Yeah. Maybe WWE just knew a heel Diego and Fernando wouldn't work, so they decided to stop it before it started. If that's the case, I why wish WWE would have done the same in. thing to the heel turns we're about to see at number five and below. Before we're that, though, we, number we eight, are... Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy's heel run in TNA from 2010 to 2011 is loved by some and hated by others. However, I think everyone can agree that it was much better than when WWE tried it in 2003. In January of that year, Hardy was taking on Rob Van Dam, RVD won, and after the match, the charismatic enigma attacked Van Dam and thus became a heel for the first time in his career. A similar thing would happen the next week when Jeff Hardy lost a match to Booker T. Hardy once again engaged in a post-match beatdown, but it was Jeff who ended up getting laid out. The same thing would happen again next week. Jeff Hardy interfered a match between Kane and Rob Van Dam oh, and no. got laid out. Shawn Michaels would try to offer some words of wisdom to Hardy afterward, but Jeff didn't listen and ate sweet chin music. Then, the next week, Jeff Hardy turned face after he saved Stacey Keebler. Jeff Hardy is inherently a hard character to make heel since he does the awesome high-risk moves that fans like, True. and he's got a cool look, among other True. things. Like with Daniel Bryan, I once and again he never won a, a little match, bit of credit for realizing a heel Jeff Hardy wasn't going to work and adjusting. However, what I cannot give them credit for is making Hardy look like a door. Whenever yeah. he'd do a post-match beatdown or interfere, he almost always got beaten up. I know good guys are supposed to win, but a heel needs to have at least some credibility, and Jeff didn't have any. Number seven, Tucker. While Heavy Machinery wasn't one of the all-time great tag teams, it was by no means bad. The team had some entertaining moments and a number of solid matches. However, it was clear that WWE prioritized Otis over Tucker, and that was made crystal clear with Tucker's heel turn. In 2020, Otis won the Money in the Bank briefcase. Come on, However, Otis due to several months worth of story Telling, Only Otis had to defend the briefcase face. against The Miz. During that match, Tucker attacked Otis and thus turned him heel. We were supposed to be a team, but I was the workhorse. I carried the load. 
Now, the reason behind Tucker's heel turn wasn't bad, but the problem was WWE did nothing with it. Otis yeah, and Tucker never even had a match against each other. <gasps> Eight days after Tucker's heel turn, he had a match with Ricochet and lost in 38 seconds. Oh yeah, oh Tucker did become the 24-7 champion for all of one minute. After that, Tucker would be off TV one for minute. months, and once he returned, he was released a few days later. Tucker's heel turn was just pointless, and it seemed like it was just a way for Otis to lose the Money in the Bank briefcase. Number six, Eugene. Eugene oh is a character that WWE likely would prefer you forgot. He debuted in 2004 as the nephew <laughs> of Raw General Manager Eric Bischoff. What makes no Eugene way. such a controversial character is that he was special. In fact, the Eugene That's character special. is inspired by the autistic Rest. son of wrestling legend Rip Rogers. While the character was controversial, Eugene did become popular with fans and was instantly a babyface. Eugene yeah, remained that way Eugene for the majority of his career, face. but not for all of it. In late 2006, Eugene what? formed a tag team with Jim Duggan and they even challenged for the World Tag Team Championship. The group was unsuccessful in their attempts, causing Eugene to snap. After losing a match, Eugene attacked his tag team partner and turned heel. No, don't laugh at me! I am special! The Eugene character could never work as a bad guy, and the whole heel turn just felt like it was done because for shock like value. It was no. going to be a challenge to get fans to hate a character who is supposed to have special needs, and WWE barely tried. Within Why a month, do WWE that? dropped it, and Eugene went back to being a good guy again. Yeah. All right, now we're getting into the really bad stuff. Brace <laughs> yourselves. Number five, Nikki A.S.H. In June 2021, Nikki Cross debuted a new character, Nikki A.S.H., almost a superhero. Naturally, Nikki, Nikki was a good a guy, a girl, and the gimmick was pretty yeah. good too. It was a lot more flashy and colorful than most women on the roster. Plus, it led to Nikki winning money in the bank and then cashing in to become Raw Women's Champion. After that, Nikki A.S.H. teamed up with Rhea Ripley and the two <laughs> became the Women's Tag Team Champions. As a face, Nikki A.S.H. was all right. That was until she turned heel. In January Ooh. 2022, Nikki attacked Ripley and became a villain. It was similar to when the Hurricane turned heel and became Gregory Helms. However, unlike Helms, Nikki A.S.H. kept using the exact same character, entrance music no. and all. I think the idea was that she was so delusional that she still thought she was a hero. But then, should she change her character from almost a hero to an actual hero? The character didn't work as a heel, and part of that might be because she didn't have any great storylines or rivalries after she turned. Oh, Regardless, no. WWE yeah. eventually agreed and had Nikki time. A.S.H. revert to her original Nikki Cross persona. Number four, Mick Foley. Mick Foley is one of those beloved wrestlers yeah, because of his willingness to put his health and safety on the line mm. to entertain fans, on top of just being a wonderful human being. While Mick Foley yeah, had worked as a heel him. in the 90s, by the 2000s, Foley had cemented himself as a true fan favorite. That's why, in 2006, it was so bizarre to see Mick Foley turn heel. That year, Mick Foley began a rivalry with Edge, leading to their iconic WrestleMania match. A few weeks later, Foley would face Edge again in a triple threat match involving Tommy Dreamer. However, it was all a setup, and Edge and Foley attack Dreamer, turning Foley heel. Listen to this crowd reaction. Smart to stay outside and, and Foley from behind. What? Did you hear it? No? Well, that's exactly the point. At this stage in Mick Foley's career, nobody wanted to boo him. The man had given up his health to give fans the best matches possible. Who in their right mind is gonna boo that? Now, the reason behind the heel turn in storyline was that Mick- I was literally trying to hear what is going on. And I'm just hearing, like, I can't, I literally just hearing negativity, but not like, whoa, let's go or boo. And then he's like, did you hear it? Nope, you didn't. Like, sucker. Oh my god. Okay, I got baited hard. Foley was impressed by Edge, so he decided to join him. The heel turn didn't last super long, though, with Foley turning face again during his rivalry with Ric Flair later in the year. Another reason this heel turn was so bad is that by 2006, Mick Foley had been making sporadic appearances in WWE. It was like when WWE made Dusty Rhodes heel in 2011 or Shawn Michaels in 2013. Foley, like both Rhodes and Michaels, was a respected and beloved legend at this point that nobody watched to hate. Number three, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now I know that a lot of- It's like, there is a thing about it. When, when the guy, you like the guy because he is so nice and so lovable, like the special guy and, and, and Mick, it is so hard to hate on them. Like, I don't know, why would you ever make them heal? And even if you do, like you have to have a really good reason and maybe for a short time. I, for example, cannot see Cody Rhodes as turning a heel unless he is turning a heel against the bloodline because he has to treat them in the same manner as a heel would treat them in order to win against them but that is not actual heel in my opinion like that is just showing them that even if you're nice you are not dumb 
will say this is the worst heel turn, but let me explain. WrestleMania 17 is considered by many to be WWE's best event ever. Part of that reason is because the two biggest stars of the Attitude Era faced off in the main event, The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Rock was the WWE Champion and Austin was the challenger. The two fought in a notice qualification match, but partway through, Austin's arch nemesis, Vince McMahon, came out. McMahon then helped Austin win the match, and afterward, the two celebrated and had a beer. This turned Stone Cold Steve Austin, the most popular wrestler on the roster, into a heel. While it was shocking, it didn't make any sense. These two had spent years making each other's life a living hell, and all of a sudden, they were cool with each other? Also, yeah, no, soon after aligning bad. himself with McMahon, Stone Cold joined forces with Triple H too. You know, the man who hired Rikishi did Austin with a car. The biggest problem though, yeah, was that fans that? couldn't stop cheering Austin. He was just that popular. The heel turn felt like a swerve <laughs> so the show could end with a swerve. I mean, I but the numbers show it was the wrong move. After WrestleMania 17, WWE's TV viewership dropped and so did their pay-per-view buys. The other big issue was that there wasn't really another main event face that could fill Stone Cold's void. Oh, the Rock was gone after WrestleMania to film a movie and while there were still top level face wrestlers, they weren't near the level that Austin was at. Now the reason I don't I have don't this think... heel turn at number one is because afterward, Anyone Stone Cold did have some pretty funny <laughs> moments, especially involving Kurt Angle, so it's hard to say it's the absolute worst. Plus, Stone Cold did eventually turn face again and had another WrestleMania classic with The Rock in 2003, thankfully without any BS swerves. Number two, Michael Cole. Involving WWE commentators what? in storylines is often a difficult thing to do. Some work okay. out all right, like with Pat McAfee, but a lot don't. WWE tried not once, but twice to make Jim Ross a heel, but both failed. In fact, Ross actually got cheered after kicking Michael Cole in the nuts. Thank you. Oh! <laughs> what? What the? Speaking of Michael Cole, while heel Jim Ross was bad, heel Michael Cole was much worse. JR didn't stay a heel for too long, but Michael Cole was a heel business. for over two years, and the only reason he stopped was because of Jerry Lawler's real-life on-air heart attack. Now, what about Michael Cole made him such a lousy heel? Well, unlike heel commentators like Jesse Ventura and Bobby Heenan, who were entertaining, Michael Cole was just obnoxious and annoying. Well, the reason we put six divas in this matchup is because what we can't make up for in quality, we can make up for in quantity. Something like that. Cole was also the main commentator for WWE, being the play-by-play -play guy, so fans heard his voice more than bad. anyone else on the show. Now, there's an argument that Michael Cole was actually the best heel since he made so many people legitimately upset. The only problem was, as I a mean, commentator, Michael true. Cole couldn't get beaten up. Sure, he did get in the ring from time to time, yep. but those were exceptions. Unlike everyone else on this list, there was never any payoff to Cole's heel antics, and that's why he's so high up. However, mm. what could be worse than heel Michael Cole? Well. And the number one worst heel turn in WWE is Shanti. Dean Ambrose. Okay. After breaking up four years like, earlier, Dean Ambrose, like, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns either. reunited the Shield. However, about two months into it, Roman was forced to take time off after his real-life leukemia had returned. Yeah. The same night this announcement was made, Dean and Seth won the Raw Tag Team Championship. Where is Immediately Dean Ambrose though, today? Ambrose attacked Rollins and turned heel. Now this moment was actually really well done. Fans had just seen Dean, Roman, and Seth embrace on stage, making them want to see Rollins and Ambrose win the tag titles even more. Then, when everyone is feeling good, Dean Ambrose ruins it like a true heel. However, things quickly went downhill. The way you cheer your little hearts out for Seth Rollins makes me sick. No, literally makes me sick to my stomach. Makes me want to throw up. And what is that smell? Ambrose's heel character became really hokey, with him saying he had to vaccinate himself from Rollins' illness. He would even come out to the ring wearing a gas mask at one point. This mid-90s WWE villain did not fit at all with the more serious and darker character that Dean Ambrose yeah. had built. What made this oh even God, worse is that this heel him. turn could have and should have been really good, considering what Seth Rollins had done to Dean Ambrose four years earlier. While Dean did win the Intercontinental Championship, he only held the title for about a month before losing that. He also lost clean to Seth Rollins right after bragging that Seth had had never beaten him clean, ruining Ambrose's credibility. This heel turn was so bad and Aww. so poorly handled that it was the reason Dean Ambrose left WWE They didn't even do the research the on his own AEW. character. On top of that, He's just AEW four now, months right? after Dean's heel turn, he reunited with Rollins and Roman Reigns to reform the Shield. The whole reason Ambrose turned heel in the first place was because he said the Shield made him weak. Not only did this contradict Dean Ambrose's actions, it made his heel turn entirely pointless. Ambrose himself was rightfully upset about this, and there's actual video of him getting angry. Angry. To hear what Dean told WWE, watch this video. Oh my god, there's one getting angry backstage. To be honest, I do understand completely when wrestlers are so frustrated with the company and what the company has done to them because if they don't have a reliable or good story and good, I don't know, it's not called production, but like a good 
maneuver towards becoming who they are becoming uh, or if the company doesn't listen to them at all and they are trying to revive their character or work harder on the character and they are not don't have any backup of course you get frustrated like and at the end of the day it's your face blasted on it like all the decisions that were behind the scenes nobody knows who made them all you know and all you can blame is the person like you can say dean is the problem like it is his fault when it is not actually it can be so many other things and that is the case with so many wrestlers there's so many things in the world actually like for example i I'm, I'm a youtuber let's say this i'm a youtuber i upload videos but i don't edit my own videos anymore like i used to do that back in the day but now i don't have the time to do that so when my editor makes a mistake and i don't see it for example if i check really quickly because i cannot check every single video multiple times and stuff um and i upload the video and there are mistakes in the video oh sorry that's my alarm uh there are mistakes in the video then I am to blame. I feel like it's my fault because it's my face on it, you know? So I feel like really bad about it. But at the same time, I cannot do a lot about that because mistakes happen and we all, we are just humans. Um, so yeah, and that's the thing. I, I really feel bad about it. I feel frustrated because I know the solution would be for me to edit my own videos by myself and do everything by myself, but I can't, I have to rely on other people. And once you rely on other people with your face blasted on like it's frustrating there is no other outcome uh, but yeah that is it i hope you enjoyed this video thanks so much for watching and let me know in the comments down below what else would you like me to react to make sure to include react in the uh, comment as well as either the title of the video yeah the title of the video and from whom it is made or just the title of the video and i can find it myself uh but that's it also yeah i do upload regularly on patreon patreon.com slash support bunny i upload everything WWE related, all the recaps from SmackDown, Raw, uh, NXT documentaries. Right now I'm watching uh, The Queen of Villains on Netflix. I already finished the Mr. McMahon documentary and The Queen of Villains is about a Japanese uh, wrestler turning heel. Um, and it is really good. I watched the first episode, really, really good. I love it because it's Japanese and the setting is in Japan and it's so beautiful. Um, I can't wait to watch episode two after this video, but yeah. Thank you so much and see you on Patreon or see you in the next video tomorrow. Bye!